Good morning, everyone, from Harbor Boulevard, right next to Disneyland. Look at this. Look at this social distancing. There is no one around. But I have driven over here to this area because today we're going to Disneyland. Of course, as you may have guessed, we can't exactly pull into the parking garage right now. It is still closed. Right along with the park itself, actually. So far, it's all been closed for 10 days. The entire Disneyland Resort. The longest closure by far in its entire history. But that's not even the crazy part. The crazy part is it looks like it's now going to be closed for at least 20 more days. Possibly even 24 days, which would make it more than a month. So you may be asking yourself, if the parking lot is closed and the park is closed, then what the heck do you mean we're going to Disneyland today? Well, it's true that we can't physically set foot in the park today, but we can step into the park back in the 1960s. How? Through a little random land time travel. All right, we're gonna start here from right in front of the Tropicana. Everybody concentrate. Think random land. All right, everybody. We are now traveling back in time, back to the 1960s, and we're gonna wake up on a beautiful, sunny Anaheim, California morning at the Tropicana Motel, which is still there actually, right across the street on Harbor Boulevard. All right, let's head over to Disneyland via the walking entrance, the same one that we use today, although the cars look a little different in the employee parking lot back then. Look at that monorail. All right, let's get our tickets at the old school ticket booths and head through these old school turnstiles in that chain link entrance fence. One of the things I love about Disneyland is that look at this, the entrance experience is still very much the same, same feel, but just look how well dressed everybody is. Oh, the Disneyland news, remind me to pick up a newspaper later. I miss that parking lot. I love how you can see the train before you enter the park and hear the sounds and get stoked. And speaking of getting stoked, before you even enter the park, not only do you get to see Mickey out here, the flowers, the train, but if you turn around, look at this. It's Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, your favorite friends from the Hundred Acre Wood, right to greet you right from the beginning. Pooh's got his own name on his shirt. I love this old school look. And look at Tigger over here. He hasn't aged a day. How exciting would that be? Oh, thanks for noticing me. Boy, these kids really are noticing. Look, Eeyore is swarmed. His mouth is open. He's just standing there confused. He's got no friends to protect him. He's exposed. Run, Eeyore, run. It's all right, we're finally in. And what do we see right from the beginning? It's our old pal, Mickey Mouse. Look at those tiny little Mickey hands. Nothing more exciting than seeing Mickey Mouse except seeing a lady in a very brightly colored shirt. Look at this. Even Mickey Mouse looks impressed. Hello. Hi, Mickey. I love this. They're getting sick pics over here, shaking his hand. They've got their autograph books ready. Oh, look at that. That is fantastic. What a great way to kick things off, huh? Oh, I love the sign on the Opera House, the old great moments with Mr. Lincoln. That's how we know we're in the 60s, by the way, because we've got Lincoln and, whoa, look, the fire truck. Here it comes. I was thinking about this the other day. Back at this time, you would have had to pay 10 cents for the horse-drawn omnibus, a few cents to ride things, and it must have felt a lot more like a ride, where now it feels like, ah, I don't want to take the little car, you know, I'll just walk, but back then, as you can see, here on this little sign, if you paid 10 cents, you really felt like, all right, I'm on an attraction. Look at that, we made it to the end of Main Street, and there she is, Sleeping Beauty Castle. Oh, gosh. Oh, we can see our brightly colored shirt lady. She is walking across the drawbridge. Wait a minute. She's stopping, she's waving hello over there. She's wondering what we're doing. We're getting a good shot. We're getting a good shot. Hold still. We'll zoom in. Right, line up the shot here. Get a sip. Wait a minute. 
What's she doing? Oh! She's waving us over! Oh! She wants us to see the swans! A lot of people don't know Disneyland used to have rare black swans in the moat. Wow! Oh! Look at this! It's the Seven Dwarves and Snow White! Dopey! Dude, we're barely in the park and we're already seeing Snow White and the Dwarves? Oh my gosh, look at the Matterhorn Mountain. Beautiful, that's when it was brand new. A brand spanking new mountain. You can see all those bobsleds whirling around over there. And look, we caught up with Snow White, signing some autographs. We got, what is that, Doc out here? Shaking hands. Meanwhile, up above us, looks like Hans, Fritz, and Otto are ascending the Matterhorn. We've got our yodeler down here with his accordion, making sure things are cool. I think he's down there to catch him, just in case. <laughs> Wow, look at that. You hear the music now. Oh boy. The monorail. And more importantly, the submarines. That was very futuristic back then. Very exciting. And look, I think we're going down. This is the captain speaking. Welcome aboard. We are now underway and proceeding on a course that will take us on a voyage of exploration through liquid space. En route, we will pass below the polar ice cap and then probe depths seldom seen by man. Make yourself comfortable, but please remain seated at all times. And no smoking, please. The smoking lamp is out. You may now be noticing some of our wild marine life in the submarine lagoon, along with one of our expertly trained live divers. Actually, this is a clip from Marine Land and not from Disneyland. But I got you for a second there, didn't I? We've enjoyed having you aboard on this adventurous voyage through liquid space, our last frontier on planet Earth. Station the maneuvering watch. Rig ship for mooring. Aye, aye. Stand by for station. All ashore, please. All ashore. You know, I really miss that old submarine voyage. It was fantastic. I mean, I like the Nemo version too, but that original old school trip through liquid space was just something else. Look at this, we got the Ethan Allen over here, the Sea Wolf, the Nautilus. Submarines have different names, but they're still the exact same ships as they were back in Waltz. Alright, looks like this one is heading out into the coral reef, into the submarine lagoon. And what's that up above it? Oh, we got the monorail there. You can see people loading onto the monorail up the ramp. And out from underneath, we got some sailors a second ago. Look at this gent in the hat. All the passengers coming into Disneyland. Wow. See what I mean about people just much more dressed up. I see shawls. I see hair well done. Oh, here comes the monorail past the old yacht bar. And I think we're actually about to go up there and take a ride on the Skyway to Fantasyland. Let's hop aboard, oh boy. See the old school Atopia cars down there? You can smell the diesel fumes, the people mover. Oh, I miss that people mover. You can see the band rocking down there. That is amazing. Now, this is 1968 or later here. It's a little bit later than some of the shots because of the people mover and all that different stuff from Tomorrowland. But Boy, still, what a classic view. Classic Disney experience. All right, we're headed in to the Matterhorn Mountain now. Look at this. If we slow it down, you can just see bobsleds. Whoa! Rushing through the hole there. It's a Swiss mountain. It has to have some holes. Look at this. We're entering Fantasyland now. Keep a sharp eye out and you'll see a lot has changed. We got the Chicken of the Sea pirate ship here. And wait a minute. There's Small World. Brand new, it's a Small World. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That scared me a little bit, that bucket. Oh, look at this. It's Skull Rock down there. Oh, man. Now, that is something I never saw myself. But it looks fantastic. I'd love to explore that. Insane. Oh, Monstro's still down there. Look at that, no fence. People can just get right up close to that dangerous whale. Watch out, he's a monster. Look at this. Do you see that? It is Hook. Pan and Smee walking around down there. Look, you can still see him here in the crowd. You see that? Peter Pan and company. They're always hanging out together. There's the Fantasyland Theater. This is now uh, Pinocchio, but it used to show movies. You can see it showing Winnie the Pooh. And then before there was a village house, this was the home of Dumbo the Flying Elephant. 
And then here's Casey Jr., which hasn't moved at all. I hope they never move that, actually. It's a classic. All right, what we're going to do now is switch gears and head back across the park on the Skyway to Tomorrowland. Look, another view of the Storyland boats. And one more view of the Matterhorn. I just can't get enough of passing through that old school Swiss mountain with plenty of holes, just like the cheese. All right, back down into Tomorrowland. Here we've got the Autopia, and underneath, it's the old school motorboat cruise. Oh, ooh, look at Small World. You know what? We might as well head over there. Let's go take a ride on Small World, shall we? Look at that beautiful old school sign. They should bring that back. Maybe Bank of America has the sign now, huh? It's one of the original sponsors, although the original, original sponsor, I believe, was UNICEF at the 1964 World's Fair. This was a very exciting attraction when it moved to Disneyland. Look at all those rolly crump whirling things. Oh, look at this, 11.45. You know what that means, time to head inside. I've always loved that the ride is so colorful inside but the beautiful white and gold on the outside. Okay, now inside you can see, back in the 60s it was a lot harder to film in low light, especially if your film, literally film, wasn't the right type. But you can see, you can sort of make out some of the small figures inside of It's a Small World and the lights and, oh man, this is really making me want to ride that ride. Another attraction at Disneyland that hasn't changed too much over the years, they've kept it classic. I love the classics. like. Tiki Room, Pirates of the Caribbean, although that has changed a bit, Small World. I love the attractions that remain from Walt Disney's days, you know? Speaking of which, actually, whoa, butt shot. That's another reason why I love the Matterhorn. I know some people don't like how bumpy it is and how crazy, but you know, just always be a favorite of mine. That's a classic. Are you filming me? Why are you filming me? I'm just getting some popcorn. Let's go. Oh, look at this. We got Cool Dad over here, cruising into Fantasyland. Now that is a man from the 60s over there. All right, okay, now this might make you sick. So ha bear with me here. But look at these teacups. They look a lot more like the way the Disney World ones do, don't they? Look in the background, you can just see the sign for Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, the old school facades of the Fantasyland attraction. That must have been so cool. And the teacups, by the way, are located roughly where the carousel is now. And the carousel was in a different... Everything was rearranged in 1983. So this is the old school, original fantasy. All right, let's take a ride on Dumbo now. I love the corners of the old castle that are covered up by Pinocchio now and the new Mr. Toad. Just look at this. Look how fun that would have been. Well, it's still fun, right? Dumbo, another ride. That really hasn't changed, although it's a different actual ride mechanism now. Look at that. Beautiful. There's something about Disneyland. And something about it being around for so long now. And knowing that, you know, our grandparents and our parents had this kind of experience. And that we can go there. And we can take our kids there. And that someday they'll take their kids there and ride around in a circle on Dumbo and make themselves sick. There's something about that that's just awesome. Alright, let's head over to Frontierland now. And look at this. Now that is something you don't see anymore. Both the hats in the background. And also, we have our Native American chief here greeting people. Amazing, amazing. Okay, but seriously, what is up with the hats in the background? The feathers! The feathers! Mark Queen! Oh, the rivers of America. Just bustling with activity. We got the old canoes over there. Indian War Canoes back then. I think they were still called the Indian War Canoes. And then here we go. Hello, everybody. Hi there. They're getting ready for a cruise around the river. Look at those canoes. No, I've never been on those canoes. All right. Now we're on the Mark Twain, passing the Burning Settlers Cabin. I don't know if you noticed, actually. We slow it down and go back. You can actually see the dead settler outside with the arrow stuck into him. Not a great shot. I have other shots. But there's a dead settler in front of that burning cabin. All right, let's move on. Looks like there's a few rapids on the rivers of America here, but I think those canoes will be fine. Check this out over by the canoe dock. 
Look at that, no fences. I mean, you could just be right up against the water. Very different to the way it is now. All right, now this looks like Tom Sawyer Island. But I believe what we're seeing here is this young child climbing up over things, which is something you are strongly discouraged from doing now. But I think this is actually the entrance to the old Indian country, the old Indian village here, which is now bear country and then critter country. And we're about to step inside the Indian village and look at this. Right alongside the rivers of America, roughly-ish where Hungry Bear Restaurant is now, the old Indian village featured actual Native American performers doing all kinds of traditional dances with traditional costumes. It was a, a time when people were very interested in Native Americans and it was nice that it's not just, you know, cowboy and Indian TV stuff, but you could actually come meet real Native Americans and see some of their traditions and maybe actually get to talk to them after the performances. And a lot of people have very fond memories of the Indian village and the dance circle. Although, of course, it's not something that was around while I was around. Look at that old school stroller in the back. It's just a couple of poles and some cloths. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that new dance. Talk about talent. Now, I can do a fair bit of scooty fruiting myself, but nothing like that. That's amazing. That's a lot of skill. All I can make is a mess, so I really appreciate this. All right, speaking of things that aren't at Disneyland anymore, let's go ahead to another classic attraction that's gone now. What is this we're looking at? These, my friends, are the pack mules. The pack mules through Rainbow Ridge and then eventually nature's Wonderland. Look at this, right along the side of Rivers of America, right around the area where Big Thunder is now. Look how close you got to what was then called the Peaceful Indian Village there, along the side of the river. A little bit shaky footage, but I think you can see a moose back there, and now there it is, the living desert, nature's wonderland itself. Look at those pink pots back there. And I don't know if you saw it, but there was a tunnel back there that was at Big Thunder Barbecue. This is all gone now, all taken over by Star Wars. Kind of bumpy, kind of shaky. But you can see some of the balancing rocks that would have moved around back then, the playing animals. And oh, looks like we're in Adventureland now. Going to the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Still scares me. Tarzan's Treehouse is pretty cool, but I definitely miss the old Swiss Family Robinson version. First of all, if you haven't seen that movie, it's great. I think it's on Disney Plus now. Fantastic old school live action Disney movie. Wow, just seeing the Swiss Family version. I can almost hear the Swiss Capoca. You know, that old song playing from the treehouse right now in my head. That's amazing. Oh, it's making me a little dizzy, but better them up there than me, huh? It really did look handmade, too. That was the thing about the older version. It just, it looked so kind of janky, but in a fun way. Anyway, let's move on. Some steel drum players in front of the old Tahitian Terrace here. Playing a little exciting music. And in the background, our next ride, we are going to take a cruise through the jungle. I get paid for the number of people I take out, not the number of people I bring back. Don't worry if it's crowded now. There'll be lots of room on the way back. How many of you are on the jungle cruise for the first time? Good. So am I. Now there's a croc with a snappy personality. He's going to get himself a knuckle sandwich if he isn't careful. Look at all the elephants out here today. This comes as a complete surprise to me because I had no idea these guys were going to be here. If you want to take pictures, go right ahead. All the elephants have their trunks on, and now we're approaching beautiful Schweitzer Falls, named after that famous African explorer, Dr. Albert Falls. Whoa, you folks in the back, lean in, duck! Whew, that was close. And ladies and gentlemen, here you see some of our wild animals. Of course, we have bolted their legs to the floor for your safety. And here we have an example of one of the first laws of the jungle. Don't be a zebra. A whole look! That safari's in a tight spot there, but that rhino seems more than willing to give him a lift. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now turning into a pool of very dangerous hippos. As long as we hold still, they're only dangerous when they wiggle their ears and blow bubbles. And that canoe over there, some of the natives' arts and crafts. Art's the one on top. Here you see a friendly group of native traders. Whoa! Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. And if you get hit by a spear, please pull it out and throw it back. We can't keep souvenirs here. Wouldn't want you to get stuck with it. Okay, guys. Time to head back to civilization. We've been here all day, and after a quick stop with Trader Sam, I think our Disneyland day is 
just about over. Thank you guys so much for time traveling with me back to the old school Walt Disney's Disneyland back in the day. Disneyland may be closed at the moment, and at the time this is recorded, a lot of people were in isolation here at home, but I really appreciate you taking the time to step back with me into the past and check out some of the things I love most about Disneyland and its history. And now, I believe we've done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep well. Well, except for Grandpa. Grandpa's got to stay outside.